Have you ever wanted to try plein air painting but been too scared to try? If so, this is the video for you. Hi there, I hope you're doing well today. My name's Chantal, I'm an artist, and today we're gonna to be discussing the six key tips that every beginner needs to know for plein air painting, plus lots of other important information, and a bonus tip you have to stay till the end for. Go somewhere you know well. Choose a location that's quiet and go at a quieter time of the day. This means no cities. Something like the outskirts of a town is ideal. And generally the quietest time to go is between Monday and Friday early in the morning. This can differ slightly depending on the location, so that's why it's good to choose a location that you know well. The subject, make sure it's something that's not too busy or too difficult. I often gravitate towards beaches because they're a simple location to paint. Beaches don't don't really need to be simplified much. However, if you choose a beach that has a harbour or a town, it's going to be a lot more difficult. You're going to need to put a lot more effort into simplifying it, and that might be a skill that you haven't fully developed yet. Consider composition. Choose a location that is simple or easy to simplify. One of the main reasons that a lot of people are hesitant to start drawing or painting outside is because other people will see, they'll be watching. And what I will say is honestly, this doesn't happen as often as you think. Most of the time, people might glance over, watch a little bit, but they'll generally move on. They're unlikely to start a conversation with you. However, if you choose a slightly more hidden location, keep off the main path, you're less likely to have people passing you as you're creating art, which can be a little bit off-putting. And now for the second tip, take as few supplies with you as possible. You might find it daunting if you have too many art supplies to choose from. If you take your entire setup with you that you use at home and are expecting the session to go like it would at home, you're going to be disappointed because it really won't go like that. You're going to be balancing supplies on your lap or juggling things in your hands. Whatever your setup is, you're not going to have enough room for all of your supplies. It could be windy, your supplies will fall over, things like dirt, leaves, sand. It's a different experience and you should prepare for that. Make it easy for yourself by just bringing one sketchbook, one paint palette, or a maximum of five color pencils if you're drawing. Bring the bare minimum that you need to create art with. And make sure that you bring supplies you're comfortable with. When it comes to paint palettes, if possible, bring a different palette to the one you use at home. My outside paint palettes have ended up being filled with sand, dirt, dandelion, line fluff, anything and everything will go in your palette and stick to your paints. So also make sure you're not taking your best supplies with you. Take cheap paints, pens, pencils with you, don't take your best supplies. Number three, understand that your first time probably won't go well. You will forget supplies. The lighting will change. Paint will dry faster than you used to. The wind will be annoying. You will adapt over time to this new way of creating art. So please be patient. This isn't the kind of thing you're gonna nail first time. It takes time to figure out what you like and what you don't like. When I first tried to paint outside, it didn't go well. I actually painted from my car. I chose a subject that was really far away and I tried to add all those details and it just created an entire mess. I didn't bring any pens or pencils to actually refine any details and because I was in a car the paint was taking ages to dry, it didn't go well. Number four, give yourself enough time. As a general rule of thumb, it's good to allow yourself two hours to create. After you've been a few times, you'll get a better idea of how long it actually takes, but you still want to make sure you've always got enough time to do what you want. You don't want to feel rushed. You won't enjoy the experience as much as you could. So make sure when you choose to go outside and create art, you haven't got any other plans that day. Before you go, check the weather forecast, check the tide times, make sure you're dressed for the appropriate weather, and prepared for any changes. Think extra jumpers, a raincoat, maybe a spare pair of socks or shoes to leave in the car. And for this reason, make sure the location that you choose isn't too far from your car or house. 
Tip number five, keep a different sketchbook that's got drawing or watercolor paper in, and that is your outside sketchbook. This is really important because if you take your studio sketchbook outside, there are so many things that could go wrong. Your art could get covered in sand, dirt, you could get rain on the pages, moisture could accidentally reactivate some of your paintings, you could accidentally draw on other pages with your color pencils. So make sure you take a small, different sketchbook and that's the one that's going to be exposed to the elements. And actually, another little secret tip that I like to do is put all my art supplies in a Ziploc bag, or at least the sketchbook. That way, when you're transporting your sketchbook, whether that's in a tote bag, a rucksack, a car, a house, outside, it's not being exposed to the elements. It's a really good way to make sure your sketchbook is protected from sand or rain, Number six, prioritize style over substance. What I mean by this is you're not gonna be able to replicate what you see, not as a beginner, not with the time you have or the lack of experience doing it outside. When you're creating art outside, you're replicating what it feels like to be there and not what you see. Focus on the main features and the lighting. Don't worry too much about the details. Personally, when I paint outside, I'm perched on a log or on the floor, sketchbook and pattern palette on my lap trying to juggle everything. For me, an hour is plenty long enough because by the time the hour's up, I've lost feeling in my legs, in my bum, I'm kind of achy and ready to finish there. If the whole point of you going out is to just create and see what you see and make a log of that, then you're gonna wanna work quickly because it's not a very comfortable setup. Obviously, when you see plein air painters online, they will generally have an easel, a tray, a chair. They'll leave very early in the morning and be there the entire day. And they kind of can because they've got a very comfortable setup that allows them to do that. But honestly, if you're creating art outside just because you want to, it's gonna be a really simple setup. So you're not gonna wanna be there too long because it will become uncomfortable. And also, if you live somewhere like I live, you can't get fully set up and take your time with it because the weather changes so quickly. It could rain at any moment. So I like to work quickly to ensure that I can get my painting done in the time that I have before it starts raining. Honestly, because of where I live, if I was gonna really take my time, there would be a lot of paintings that were unfinished. I would just have to abandon them because of the rain. Work with what you have and what you see. Stylize the piece, have fun, and understand that it's not gonna be completely realistic. And that's absolutely fine because you're there in person is the feeling of being there in that moment bonus extra tip is to date and write the location on everything you create also whilst you're there hold the finished painting up with the view behind and take a photo. It's a really cool picture and a lovely memory to look back on. I have quite a few of these on my Instagram and they just look really cool. And for my own personal tip, what I like to do, I begin all of my paintings with three steps. First, I use a pencil and really quickly block out shapes. I don't add any details. It's literally just really rough shapes. Then my second step, I grab a waterproof fine liner, go over the shape sketch and add some line work, some details, buildings, trees, the harbour. Once that's done, I rub that out and move on to the third step, which is watercolour. Usually I've reached the third step within like five to 15 minutes. And once you're at the painting stage, you could be really accurate. You could add lots of details. You could just splash paint on. You could add watercolour and then decide you want to refine the line work. I like to reach this third step really quickly because then if you need to abandon it, you can and you still have a finished painting. I actually did this before in the autumn plein air video that we did on this channel. The weather was lovely and then it started raining. We had to abandon, the page got completely covered in water, but because I did the other steps really quickly, we still kind of have a finished painting. So sometimes using a pen or a pencil for the line work can give a smoother result. If you don't do this and you're relying on doing lots of layers, like I was the first time that I did plein air painting, it can be really hard to rely on waiting for the layers to dry. Well, that's everything. That's everything that I've learned from the three or four years that I've been drawing and painting outside. If you'd like to see a video on the supplies I take with me, my setup, my process, just let me know down below. And if you'd like to come along plein air painting, there's a playlist down below. We've gone to lots of fun locations and we also spent a week in Italy drawing, which was awesome. So lots of fun stuff. If you found this helpful, please leave a like and consider subscribing. I'll see you on Thursday with another video. Bye-bye.